In this video, we will show you how we builded our engine bay for the Corvette ZR1 and how to follow along if that's something you will like to add to your scale model. The first step is to get a good photo reference. Then map into three or four sections. Start with the area that stand out the most. In this case is the central area with the engine block and the supercharger. After that, establish a baseboard in the shape of the engine bay with the hood open. In this case, it's similar to an inverted trapezoid. You can cut to shape first a paper reference if it's easier for you. The material we use in all of our projects is PVC soft plastic sheets, very easy to cut and grind. After you cutted the baseboard, don't forget to take into account the area for the wheels and also where the hood hinge is placed. In this case, it's a very narrow wheel area and also a front hinged hood, which requires some space. In your project, you may not need to cut those. It varies from project to project, like in our previous one, the GTR R35, with wider wheel area and rear placed hinge hood. Watch that video for clarification. First up is the supercharger and the engine block. The most simple way to create a piece is by analyzing the basic shape and what type of features does it have. In this case, the supercharger looks like a square with a little triangle base, and on top it has some grooves. Also, you have to keep in mind the position of the engine block and the overall height. In this case, it's a very precise position because of the glass transparent hood a feature that the ZR1 has. We completed the engine block cover by adding an extra piece that surrounds the supercharger. And some cover for the vent system which will be added on later after the engine is in place. After the engine block is complete, proceed with the next area. For this engine we continued with the right side and start building up the pieces that surrounds the center for you might be easier to go on with the left side. It depends of the complexity of the model you choose. The majority of the parts consist of simple geometrical shapes, like squares, rectangles, circles, or spheres. Also, don't be afraid to add your own touch to the model, as the limitations of the scale might prevent you from recreating the exact layout. Other parts consist from simple lines, lots of tubes and uneven shapes like this air filter box. You can even use some other materials or parts from old toys. For example, we used a straw for the air filter tube. One of the material we used were small wires, which are very easy to cut and bend. While you apply your parts, keep in mind not to overlay the cutouts in the baseboard as it might affect the fitment in the chassis and the hinge system. Continue with the rest of the baseboard and fill the remaining space with various parts that resemblance your engine model. Avoid making the layout flat. Get a good sense of the 3D environment and make the most out of it. Don't be afraid to bend and twist some tubes or lines and pass it under or over some parts to create a more realistic feel. After you fill all the space, you should have a piece that looks similar to this. Then apply a base color. The most common ones are black or metallic paint. After the base color, we recommend you to use colored aluminum tin for various small details. For example, we used a light blue for the supercharger, which adds a new layer of realism and make more sense compared to the actual model. We also use some metallic paint to complete the look. After we painted all the details, our model looks very similar to the real engine, not 100%, but close, in our own signature. The 
next step is to fit the engine in the body of the car, according to our calculations should fit perfectly. We completed the rest of the space by adding the engine vent for the water drain. After everything is in place, we have a complete model with full engine bay view. Also, if you are interested to see the full 43-minute video building process of this project, check out the link above.